Today I'm going to cut uh, a piece of rough uh, Lambina uh, Australian opal. Um, this uh, specimen is 19 carats and uh, it's uh, called gem Lambina which uh, means it should have a lot of color and we, we can see on inspecting this it, it really does look pretty bright. Uh, of course the the, uh, the the dullness of the surface with the uh, the pat well it's sort of a patina it's the, it's probably the surrounding matrix makes it a little bit difficult but I, I don't think we have any trouble I don't think we have any trouble agreeing that this appears to be gem material um, the one thing that I noticed is this area. And it's like an overhang here, and that's one thing that uh, I'm going to have to probably lose this top little part of it, but that's uh, that's okay. Um, one of the uh, the uh, the seller, uh, Australian Open Minds, will allow. Well, basically, it's being sold on approval. If I like the looks of it without cutting into it, I can send it back. Um, for a refund. Um, one of the only ways to uh, to evaluate rough opal without cutting it is to use transillumination. In other words, shine a light through it and see what you see. Uh, to do that I have to uh, change the camera settings here so um, I uh, it'll take a, a second. Uh, I, I personally use uh, this flashlight it's uh, called a lens light it's you don't need to have a special flashlight for this anything that'll shine a light a pretty bright light as most modern flashlights will uh, will work so let me get set for that and we'll take a look at it okay th this is transilluminating from from the uh, from the back side Well, always from the back side towards you, so you can see it. But this is from the from the back side of the stone. You may recall the back side's a little rough. So looking at it through there, um, I'm seeing this little crack-like thing there. But that's in the same area we saw earlier, that area. So that's near the surface. Um, I can turn it upside down and and take a look at it I don't see anything definite but with a back that that's that's so irregular I wouldn't be totally uh, surprised if if uh, I found a crack that that goes through it uh, the specimen is 19 carats so well the transillumination looks uh, pretty good uh, you never know what's going to show up particularly when you've got a rough surface like that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and, and start to work on it and, and we'll see how it progresses. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it and see what it looks like. That's another thing you can do before you buy it. Yeah, I think by any measure I could call this gem uh, opal, although uh, a precise definition of gem opal is, uh, well, lots of different definitions of what constitutes gem opal, but I think that the color in this is, is very good, and um, I, I think that uh, I would call it gem opal. Uh, it looks a little bit, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, uh, because uh, Murray at Australian opal mines would never uh, doesn't like to hear anything about Ethiopian opal, but it looks a, a little bit like Ethiopian opal. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, far north opal field in Australia means Ethiopia, but if, if it had been Ethiopian, it would already start to show 
the hydrophane qualities. That is, it would already show that uh, some areas are becoming uh, transparent, and I don't see that here. here. So I'm going to use the uh, the 220 wheel and uh, and start. Uh, I'm going to start on the area that's got this defect first. going through this uh, this little uh, area over the crack to see what we will see. I don't think we've gotten deep enough to, to really know. Um, I think that I'll be able to get down past that and uh, be able to use the uh, the oval underneath. This is very bright uh, and I was uh, attracted to it when I saw it uh, in, the, in the email that uh, he sends around about different things available. I'd noticed this before but I couldn't demonstrate it on Translucination. I couldn't demonstrate it before but I do see a line going through right there. So it may well be that that's a crack. And if that is a crack, we're gonna to have to make two different uh, cabochons out of this. Uh, I don't know why it's showing up now. I, I saw it earlier. Uh, I didn't, I, when, when I first looked at it, uh, I, I saw what looked like a crack. So that, that sort of gives you the, uh, tells you a little bit about the value of uh, transillumination if, uh, if you, uh, with a rough surface. Now that I've smoothed the surface, let me smooth it a little more. I'm going to transilluminate it again and see if we see anything different, just uh, as an FYI. You have to admit, uh, it's a beautiful piece of opal. Uh, I'd love to get one big stone out of it. Um, but if I, if I have to if I have to have smaller pieces of it, well, that's that's opal. I'm going to leave the back alone for now. I could smooth that out. I would lose a lot of carrot weight by doing that, and uh, so I'm going to continue working on this here. Okay, I felt a little a little nudge when I was holding it against the wheel, which usually, I uh, usually see that when using Ethiopian opal, you feel something crack. And I think that's what cracked. I got to the bottom of that and the, and the thin lip just broke off. Oh, there's a bigger, there's a bigger piece. I felt that crack. So we still have that crack showing and I would have to get down pretty deep there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go over this side. It certainly is not useful to me with this. Uh, it, this would be part of the face of the stone, assuming this is the face. Uh, so uh, this doesn't do me any good uh, with these cracks and crevices, hopefully just crevices. So I'm going to that's the thick part of the stone, so I'm going to lower this a little bit and try to smooth that out and, and see what's going on there. As a reason, Opal, this, uh, this colorful was so cheap. 
and the reason was was obvious when first looking at it. You know, it has all all these, at the very least, crevices, and uh, so it was going to be a difficult piece. It has that funny honey color look, which is what I I thought made it look like uh, Ethiopian opal, but it's not. It's not hydrophane. It's not absorbing the water, so that's not. Uh, that's obviously not Ethiopian, but. The cracks may make this such that it's uh, not usable. I don't know. It, it, it looks all right as is. If it's going to be a pendant, you try to orient it so that the color is best. And that does, that means that the pendant would have to be sort of a, an oblong rather than uh, upright pending because the color is clearly in that way and that way. Uh, now's the time where sort of a day of reckoning I have to decide just what might possibly be salvageable in this stone. I could leave it as is. I just put a polish on it and uh, basically have an opal with cracks uh, and areas of um, that beautiful color of uh, just defects. I think uh, I think a lot of people would would be accepting of that as just uh, hey, it's a it doesn't really look like I'm going to be able to get through all all these defects. I don't, I don't, there's so much color actually it's it's obscuring the defects uh, at least through the camera but all of these uh, I, I felt little pieces falling off here and there that means that you know a lot of these things were just sort of fragile uh, hanging areas that uh, basically indicative of I've had a real good look at this with my loop and uh, all of those uh, uh, crevices on the back and the sides, they all, ex they all are basically either uh, parts of cracks or, or parts. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to polish it. Uh, in this area, there's a probably a, maybe a two carat stone. I'll polish it and uh, and uh, maybe maybe one of you out there want, would like to take over from here. Um, like I said, I think this area, there is a stone in that area, a small stone. Um, I do make small stones, but um, well, somebody might want to just keep it as it is. I'm going to polish it, finish grinding and polishing it, and, and see what happens. So here we go. This is the uh, 3000 Mesh Nova wheel. Okay, here's the uh, final product. Um, I've got it polished to, to 14,000. Um, it's I may have to put it on a dop stick and, and get a better job because there's some it's not smooth you can see the way it's bumpy when I roll it like that because there's a defect that's not going to be anything but bumpy look at the color in this thing it, it truly is gem opal but unfortunately it has a lot of defects I would say that 
opal of this quality, Australian opal of this quality, without the defects is, you know, at least a, at least a couple of thousand dollars an ounce. Uh, but actually it's kind of unique looking. I've never seen this. It's slightly yellowish background. I don't think I've seen that in uh, Australian opal and that's one of the reasons that I uh, one of the reasons that I I said it looks like Ethiopian because Ethiopian opal will often have a yellowish tint. <laughs> um, I'm going to give this to somebody. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to be completely flooded with uh, requests. Uh, um, I, well, I'll decide if 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 I'm going to give it to you to somebody as is. They're going to have to know how to how to cut opal. Uh, if it's just uh, someone who loves opal and likes to watch it, um, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to repolish it because it's 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 it doesn't mean. Okay, this is the final stone. I've uh, taken it to full polish with cerium oxide. It's a great looking stone except for the flaws. And honestly, uh, if you wear this. Uh, I think they're not going to comment so much about the flaws as, as, as they will the color. So, um, if, if you want this stone, just let me know in the comments. And I'm going to take everybody's name who, who, uh, who says that they want it within, say, three days. Uh, at that point, I'll write down all the names and, uh, uh, and choose a name randomly. Maybe I'll have to make little uh, things, uh, little slips with names to pull out of a hat. I promise you all it will be done fairly. So there it is. Uh, okay, this is the final stone. It's uh, about 16 by 12 millimeters and weighs just over eight carats. The front is nicely polished. The back is, uh, well, not all opals uh, have a polish on the back. It is polished, but it's not polished as well as the front because the front will show. But uh, 12 by 16 millimeters a little over eight carats, and uh, that's it.